Good morning, Steve, and uh, thank, great to be here, and thanks for having us. Um, yeah, indeed, we, um, we we launched our LNG outlook um, um, yesterday, and we look not only at the uh, the short-term trends in the market and the current tightness and what we expect to happen in the next few years, but importantly, as you just mentioned, also the long-term outlook. Um, and I think it is particularly that outlook in um, up to 2040, where we see that 50% growth coming primarily from Asia. Um, and I think probably the one thing that I want to highlight is, is that we see it primarily coming from non-power sectors in places like China and India. So this is industry, this is buildings and heatings, uh, heating, for example. And this is where we see gas continue to play a key role in helping those um, those countries decarbonize, making that shift from uh, from coal to gas and LNG in particular playing an outsized role in that in the, in the years to come. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking to uh, Wales Sawan quite recently as well. And obviously we talked a lot about LNG uh, during that conversation. Is the growth in LNG at Shell and elsewhere, and we've seen how many players now are upping their presence, upping their volumes over the medium term as well. Is this going to come at the expense of actually spending on renewables, on real um, uh, clean energy? Because as much as LNG is fantastic and it's cleaner than coal, it is not carbon free uh, unless it's decarbonized and, and it is not free of emissions as well. So is this at the expense of, of actually ultimate getting to net zero? Yeah, it's a great question, Steve. And I think it's important to, um, you know, to recognize that all of these things are needed. Um, maybe just a couple of things that, uh, that, that, you know, to share. I think one thing that most we very often forget is that actually the world only consumes 20% of its energy today as electricity. And renewables will have to play an absolutely critical role to, to decarbonize that portion of the economy and of the world. Um, whilst at the same time, we, we believe that during the energy transition, gas still has a really important role to play in other parts of the economy such as heavy industry and to decarbonize there. Um, the other thing I'd say is, though, that in places where we see very rapid growth of renewables, that even there in the power sectors, gas still plays an important role to help complement that build out um, of renewables in helping provide stability in the grid and flexibility when renewable generation goes up and down. So in places like today, like Spain and the, and the Netherlands that already have a lot of uh, renewables penetration, um, gas still plays that role of providing that flexibility and stability, Steve. Yeah, I'm Cedric, good morning to you then. Does, does the LNG investment sort of gain momentum heading into the rest of this year? Uh, and, and that's post the hardships then of 2023. Yeah, so I think what we've seen is in uh, from 22 to 23, we've seen a lot of tightness in the market. And that tightness is still there overall if we look in terms of tight supply. But I think at the same time, we've had um, perhaps the um, the benefit in the market that we've had, um, you know, now in the northern hemisphere, three mild winters in a row. So so stocks at least are, um, you know, inventories are good. Um, and so that's going to help in the, in the near term with that tightness. At the same time, what we see if we look beyond this year, there's a lot of su additional supply coming on in um, uh, 2025 to 2027 period that will help um, loosen the market. And at the same time, we also see a lot of latent demand in places like India, for example, that's, that is price sensitive. But as that additional supply comes on and, and prices um, you know, moderate a bit, we expect that that demand will come on to, uh, to absorb that additional supply growth. Yeah, Cedric, out of the U.S., though, you have seen um, a temporary pause on new export licenses. Then does that, does that put the viability of LNG at risk, do you think? So I think if um, what we see, what we've seen uh, announced right now, in a practical sense, if we look ahead to the to the rest of this decade, I don't think it will have a major impact. Um, you know, I think we're, we already see is is that close to 100 million tons per annum is in um, in operation from uh, U.S. Um, LNG exports, and that there is an additional close to 100 MTPA, which is already in construction. So, um, and there's even more projects that have already been permitted, and so that which are not impacted by by the pause. Of course, there are other projects in the, in the funnels that are still waiting for. For their permits that are that are impacted by that pause. So I think a lot will depend on how long this pause will be, um, and and that will then determine the longer term impact on the market. Of course, the one thing that doesn't help is is that it that it does reduce the confidence of the market in the market because in any market, and including like our own, you know, investor confidence is critical, um, and that certainty that we have in order to build out that uh, that supply growth that the world needs.